not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Superman. I should probably zoom that in a bit. Uh, it all fitted on the screen in the, 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 the intro sequence, but now it's in a little letterbox. Um, oh, there's a countdown thing. Um, I've never played this before. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm supposed to find my friends in this virtual world. This is Superman on the N64. Uh, I watched it recently for the first first time I've ever actually seen anyone play the game. I, I know it by reputation alone. I was watching um, Matt Replay Retro playing it and I laughed a lot uh, because it infuriated him and that, that amused me. <laughs> oh my god. Um, why is... Uh, oh dear. So, I guess Superman is having to fly through hoops to, uh, is, is it some kind of a, is the allegory, is it? Is, it, is this, <clears throat> what's the word? Um, Lex Luthor has got him doing crap. Oops. So, I don't know. I mean, there's shades of pilot wings here. I never played that either. I have got Pilot Wings 64 on this here EverDrive cartridge. I've also got it on the SNES EverDrive cartridge as well. And I do intend to play them at some point. Oh, ass! Of course, you know why that happened. You know who to blame. It's not actually my fault. It's Morrison's. Can you hear this? It is Morrison's caramel rice cakes. Blame them. Then there's no time to waste. I want to waste time. I'm eating Morrison's rice cakes. Um, they're actually really nice. I'm not being paid to say that. I'm just I just happen to be eating them. Um, yeah, I think I probably would get more enjoyment out of reviewing the rice cakes than I will the game. <laughs> Though it's not a review. It is just me playing the game very badly. Um, it's kind of frustrating in that I don't want to fly through the hoops I want to fly around and explore this city but if I do oh crap if I do that um, whoever it is I'm trying to rescue will almost certainly die do I care? to be honest no I'm not a fan of Superman I mean I like superhero comics and films, especially films, um, but I always thought Superman was incredibly naff, incredibly naff. Um, that has changed somewhat with, um, I've forgotten the guy's name, you know the recent Superman vs Batman and Justice League, that Superman, he's quite good, um, because there's that dark side to him, so I think... What? Lift the two car? What? Do what? Alright, what am I doing with it? Where am I going? I don't know what I'm doing. Can I throw it? Get lost. So I'm doing something else. What? Did I do it right? I don't know. Come on, take off your muppet. Don't walk. Fly. You fool. I want you to take off. Come on. Up. Oh, okay. That did not do what I wanted. What's wrong with him? Is he... Is there kryptonite around here? Why have I lost the power of flight? Um... Okay. <clears throat> Trigger button, apparently. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't think I'm going to do very well here. Whoops. I was highly amused by the, the Superman versus Batman, where Batman basically, I mean, that, that 
Batman costume thing. I mean, it was basically a human tank. I, I found all of that highly amusing. And the DC films apparently didn't do very well because they were really dark. Well, you know what? I like them really dark. And I don't mean visually dark, as in someone forgot to turn the lights on, though there is an element of that about them. But moody, gritty, nasty. Um, like it, oh crap. In related news, I watched Titans on Netflix recently, DC's Titans, and I think it was better than any of the Marvel Netflix series, including Daredevil, the only Marvel TV series I've seen that I preferred was Legion, and that's not on Netflix. Um, yeah, absolutely bloody awesome. Really, just Robin. It's all about Robin, and that's all I'm going to say because no There's spoilers. No time to waste. I want to waste time because you're super crap, and why not? I know a place in Milton Keynes that looks like this, and in fact, having said that, uh, there is a scene from the, one of the Christopher Reeve Superman films. And I th I'm not sure which one it is, whether it's the first one or the second one. But it was shot outside the railway station in Milton Keynes. There you go. Did you know that? You do now. I lived there. Well, I lived in a little village called Dean's Hangar at the time when they shot that. But everyone who lived anywhere near there knew about it. And, you know, I actually didn't give a crap because I didn't. Christopher Reeve, lovely guy, absolutely. Um, his Superman is a large factor in why I don't give a crap about Superman, because as a character, naff. Sorry, but, you know. It took thingy, it, it took Michael Keaton as Batman to make me give a damn about DC. Oops. Oh. It makes a funny noise when you miss. Oh, come on. Stop standing around, you knob. It's like he, he, he's taking a breather and then it looked like he was going to try and lift the bridge. It's not what you're here for. Oops. Oh. God. You could get air sick doing this. No, stop bleeping at me. Bleepy. Oh. Come on, come on. Ugh. Put the police car at the end of the... What? Oh, you bastard. Get off me. Ass. Ah. Rice cake. We'll have another go. Then there's no time to waste. It's frustrating in that you spend all this time flying through hoops to get to a certain place and then you're given a task where you have no clue what you're meant to do. You know, there's a brief written description which if you're not paying attention you'll miss what it says anyway. I saw it say something about police car. There's a car. Is it a police car? Don't know, not sure. Whoops, I'm out of time and I'm dead. That after all the running through hoops is a bit pissy if I'm honest and it's it's a shame because in terms of game mechanics the way things move the way it looks it's not terrible I mean yeah you've got that stupid fogging that you just expect on the N64 because limited draw distance but within the limitations of the hardware it doesn't look terrible and it doesn't handle terribly you know you can make Superman point in the right direction once you know what buttons you meant to use to do it and you realize don't bother going back to go through the hoop you missed because it's not worth it oh but then that happens, so maybe it would be. I don't know. Um, then there's no time to waste. Are you sure? 
I, I do, I just really want to go and explore. Oh, God. Now, tell you what, let's waste time. Let's, let's, let's just do exactly what he said you shouldn't. I can't even take off now. Get up, you fool. Up. Up, up and away. There we go. We'll just go this way. Because why not? Let's try and... I don't know. Sightseeing. It's a thing. Metropolis. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not convinced. <laughs> That's not a place. We know this. I'm just randomly waffling whilst getting completely lost because, well, the, uh, well, it's not Metropolis, is it? It's a virtual world he's in. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. I would like to see some kind of tram thing on this bit up here. For no good reason, it just seems like it would fit. And the Chrysler building would be good. Oops, that wasn't quite what I wanted to do. I like the Chrysler building. This looks like, well, they ripped the top of it off or something. What's that? Is this like the final ring? <laughs> I was trying to take a short, I wasn't trying to take a shortcut, but since it was the final ring, it would have been rude to not at least go through it from the wrong side. Uh, yeah. There is a lot that is not terrible about this game. Visually, I mean, it has got that fogging thing, which is a bit meh. But it works. The physics, such as they are, work. The handling of the character and being able to fly and everything, it all, all of that works. It is just that there is literally so much flying through hoops for so little payoff. It's like the payoff is a a thing you've got to do without actually knowing what you've got to do and then really it's just not possible to do it in the time that's available to you. You spend more, it's like the, 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 the few seconds it takes to work out what the hell am I meant to be doing, by the time you thought that it's too late and you're dead. Or you failed and you're right back to jumping through hoops again and that is not good. I don't know how much this game cost back in the day, but N64 games were expensive, so I'm guessing 60 quid. And 60 quid back in 1990, whatever it was, well, it's a lot of money now. I won't spend 60 quid on a game now. And 60 quid is worth a lot less now than it was back then. So, no. I think if I'd spent 60 quid on this, I would have been pretty bloody furious, to be honest. Mmm, Lex wins. Well, I tell you what, bloody Titus won if you bought this. They have a piss-poor reputation, and games like this um, have a lot to do with it. Okay, thank you for watching. Hello. Today's question for Q&A is from Growing Perspective, linked to his or her channel down there. Can't tell with a name like that. Hmm, interesting one though. Anyway, uh, for Q&A, do you think games and old systems that collectors want to charge, say, 300 for a single game or an old console, just because it's rare, are greedy bastards? Or is it fair practice? I don't think I could sell someone Panzer Dragoon Saga for 300 quid and look myself in the mirror. Um, interesting question. I, I will say this, there absolutely are some sellers on eBay who are having a laugh. There is one in particular, I won't name them particularly. Um, their username seems to be some kind of reference to a Japanese motorcycle. Uh, <clears throat> I see the prices that they charge and I think they're having a laugh because they're ridiculous, they're insane. These are relatively rare old computers. I've got probably all of them, <laughs> but um, 
And I would, you know, I spent maybe £300 up to that much for some of these these particular computers and there there they are being sold for like seven eight nine hundred pounds something insane and I, I just think and these are like buy it now prices now I know the whole point of buy it now is you spend a bit more so you don't risk losing out if you get outbid at the last minute in an auction I get that but there's a bit higher and there's absolutely bloody idiotic and those those kind of values and it's not just the one person that's just the one that comes to my mind I've seen several who uh, do it they must be selling some you know it must be working for them they surely wouldn't keep these systems on there for so long at such ridiculous prices if they weren't selling enough of them for it to be worth their while because surely there are fees for keeping a game on there but I, I do think that's crazy and daft and stupid and anyone who buys an old system at that price is stupid and more fool them because they're not worth it I love old computers and old consoles I do I, I, I it's a passion but I would not spend that much on one. And even if I had an insane amount of money, which I don't, I, I would still think anyone who spends that much on... And it's not even like they're immaculate, boxed, in perfect condition, sealed and everything. They're not. Some of them are really quite tatty. And I just think, no. What kind of bloody fool will spend that much on one of them? Um, but... I... I always say the going rate for a system or a game or anything is not the buy it now price. You will get people who are charging a stupid price as a buy it now. And I suppose it does bug me if there are no others available, if the only way to get it is it is a buy it now. And that's where the sellers have a bit of power and it can be a rip off and I don't like it. Um, the only value I care about that I think is the market value is the the price that an item sells for in a proper auction on eBay. That is the going rate. It is just unfortunate that there are some items that are so damn rare that the buyer can can dictate the price. Um, and then it's a question of is there anyone that desperate to buy the thing? Uh, a seller who's selling something at a crazy inflated price when there are others of that item available, well, that seller is then a fool because people will just go to the auction and buy it cheaper. But if there is only one and they've got it, they can dictate. I suppose it comes down to is it a buyer or a seller's market? If it is the buyer's market, if there is more than one and they are auctions, if it then sells for a very high price, I think fair enough. If people are getting into a bidding war, you know, that there, there, there's a particular game that people want and there are only two or three available and people are prepared to bid against each other and pay significant money to get that game, I think that is fair enough. It's, it's part of collecting old, rare-ish gaming hardware and software. That's just... that's part of the game, so to speak. Um, and some people will be priced out of that game, unfortunately. That's just what happens when things are rare. It is supply and demand. I just don't like it when the seller is dictating the price. Um, let, let the purchaser decide. Let market forces decide. But then I suppose, you know, if there is one, just one item, market forces... Uh, uh, that's down to the seller, isn't it? then you have the choice. You either buy it or you don't. I would rather the buyers have control. Let them dictate how much it's going to go for. It's more organic. It's more, to my mind, more honest. You're not being ripped off. If you get into a bidding war, it's your choice. Yeah, that's what I think about that. Um, good question. 
OK, if anyone else has got a question they would like to ask and have me answer in a video like this, leave your question in the comments below. Begin with four Q&As so that I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. Ah, there you are. Have you finished polishing the silverware like I asked you? Yes? Splendid. Here's 50 pence. Now, go and click the subscribe button like a good peasant. <laughs>